Jesus, mighty name, we have worshipped. Receive all our thanks, O Lord. Unto you alone will all our lifting of the hands go to. We acknowledge you, Father. Tonight we ask, O Lord, that you will speak to us. Let your word reach beyond the veil of the flesh. Let it pull down every stronghold. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now put those beautiful hands together for Jesus. Amen. Come on, is that how you do it? Thank you. You may please be seated, church. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. All right. So we continue um, from where we stopped on Sunday, right? Talk to me now. All right. So I believe someone was blessed. Um, I want to say this again and again um, to you. Um, I like you to cultivate the custom, the culture of. Um, listening, going over the teaching again and again. Give yourself to that practice. Give yourself to the culture of going over all that has been taught. Is that okay now? So I believe that when you do that, you will be able to get more than the things you got in the first sitting and then you'll be fine. Hallelujah. All right, so um, we picked our anchor scripture from Genesis chapter number 2. If you were not there on Sunday, you need to refer back to the teaching. Genesis chapter number 2, if you are there, say amen. I will start the reading from verse 15, Genesis 2. From verse 15. And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord did from every beast of the field and every fowl of the hair and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the hair and to the beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So, the idea of a wife is not just about getting an help because house help is a form of help also. Are you seeing that? So a wife is not anyone's house help. Alright? But God said there is no help that is suitable. That's the word meat there. There is no suitable help. That is... There is none on the face of the head that can meet up with his capacity. Are you following what I'm saying here? What did I say? Say it loud and clear. There is none on the face of the head that can what? Capacity. 
All right. So whatever name he gave to those animals, um, they were called. Verse 21 now. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Are you following me now? All right. So a woman is designed as a being of help. What did I say? Help. And I remember I've shared with you before that if I ask someone to come, let me give you this illustration. Come, friend. If I ask him, stand here, to come carry this um, pulpit, Let's assume you can't carry it. Try carrying it, but you can't carry it. Okay. You can't carry it. Yeah, you're a politician. <laughs> but he can't carry it. Okay? Try again. You can't carry it. I yeah, can't carry it. And I say, Pastor Joke, come and help him. Now I want you to look at this illustration. Come and help him. Now you can carry it. Yeah. Now. Yeah. You still can't carry it. <laughs> eh? <laughs> okay. All right. Power Toby is praying against you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's assume now both of you carry it. Now, both of you carry it. Yeah. So if I agree to carry it, now, good. Now they can carry it, right? Now, if I call any of the children in the children class to come and help him, will that work? If God is saying he's going to make you and help, it means he's going to bring someone who is either as strong as you are or stronger than you. Are you seeing that? Somebody who is either what? As strong as you are or stronger than you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please be seated. So, that the woman was created to help does not make her lesser than the man. Please get it. Okay? So, this evening, I want to teach you on God's perspective towards marriage. God's perspective. Not human perspective, not social media perspective, not feminism pers and perspective. Um, which other one do we have again? Is it misogynist now? Not their perspective, not cultural pr perspective, not the African man perspective, not the African church perspective, God's perspective. Is that okay? So um, I'm not going to try to move away from anything. I'm just going to say everything as it is, not leaving any stone unturned as God will help me so that we don't have assumption. Is that okay? First, the first marriage is between Adam and Eve. Say it, between Adam and Eve. Say it again. Not Adam and Steve. Say it, not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Are you seeing that now? The man was not attracted to a muscular being like him. He was attracted to a woman. Hey, the moment you come to church and you look at the guy beside you and you feel one kind, say, I just, my heart was just beating fast. <laughs> All right? So, there's a demon there that needs to be dealt with. Is that okay now? Uh, I think um, recently I saw one of my very wonderful sisters in church came to see me in the office. And I saw the pouch of the phone. So I saw 
the LGBTQ symbol, that's the rainbow, that symbol, you know. So I said to her, if anyone sees you with this pouch, they will assume you're a lesbian. Because it belongs to them. They've colonized that symbol. Are you following me now? So, like I said on Sunday, which I'm going to reestablish again, God himself said, it is not good for this man to be alone. So, if you look at that statement, if you, if you conclude, if you see, if you view God's perspective about marriage from that statement, you will think marriage was designed to solve loneliness. But God still went further to say of every other creature, there was no help suitable for him. Are you seeing that now? It is not about the feeling of loneliness. Another thing I want you to see in this scripture is that your kind of assignment determines your kind of woman. Your kind of assignment. So one thing I want you to conclude and to see is that you can't just marry anybody. It will be clear that you are beginning to know your purpose when you make that decision. Are you following me? One of the signs that you even know your purpose is that you stop proposing to just anybody. You can't ask a girl out because she's fine. You can't ask her out because she's um, your spec. You can't have. You can't ask her out because um, she's your ideal woman. It is one thing to want a thing. It is another thing to need it. But sometimes you don't need what you want. Are you following me now? Um, somebody may have diabetes and want to drink Coke. But the fellow doesn't need it. True or not true? Yes. So, From God's view, a man should not think of help until he has found the job. A man should not think of help until he has known the work. Because not everyone has the capacity to handle your destiny. Do you get what I'm saying here? Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying? See, God thinks things true. Everything that he did in Genesis was a well thought out plan. He was showing us the order of events. Man created, established in his presence, given an assignment to cultivate the presence, and also an assignment to also have dominion over all creature. And God looked at everything, he's been naming them and all those things. And God looked at that man, he said it is not good that he should be alone. God still looked at all creatures and said there's no help made for him. Adam wasn't crying to God about the need for help. God saw it before he ever saw it. Are you following me now? It is okay to ask God for a wife, but you must understand that God is not going to start thinking about the wife when you start asking. And I tell people, if God is calling you out for an assignment, there is somebody you are yet to meet or probably have met that is also preparing somewhere as an help that is suitable for you. Are you following me? So, a woman is not an afterthought. She's been in the mind of God from the beginning. Genesis 1 verse 26. Genesis 1 26. Look at it. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. Created he them. So from the beginning, God had the plan. 
God had the plan. I want to see something very strong. Look up. You see, Adam didn't marry Eve because she was the only woman on earth. He went for her because she was the one designed to meet his need. She was the one that was brought to him by God. Are you following me now? God brought her to him. So, if there were other girls on ground, it was not a matter of easy for Adam, it was easy. And, and that's one of the things I wanted to see. Despite the fact that this is one of the most dramatic union in the Bible, I mean, when he saw her, other transitions said, he screamed, wow! Like, it was a wow thing. But you will notice that the moment there was a reversal in the order, according to God's wisdom, the fall happened. Meaning that a home will crash when a woman takes the lead. It doesn't matter how intelligent a woman is. When it comes to the home front, God has created a pattern. And the pattern is that the man is the head. You can be a boss in your office. You get what I'm saying? You can be the chief surgeon in your hospital. You can be the president of your nation. But you have a head in the home. That's God's pattern. And the moment that pattern is broken, the enemy will find a space. Now, let's look at something very interesting. Can you look up, everybody? We need to do some exegesis so we can be able to define what love is in the context of all this. How will God look at the need of a man and create a being, in, in a sense, really, a more intelligent being? Uh, you need to admit that. A more in, so guys, say a more intelligent being. Say it again. Thank you. Women are more intelligent. Um, when you are married, one of the ways to fall into trouble is for your wife to warn you and you don't listen. And the way for the woman to fall into trouble to keep warning every time, even when she's not seen anything. Do you get what I'm saying? Because somebody will hear that now, you turn yourself to warn her. Anything. The one you see, the one you didn't see. <laughs> you know. Women see things miles away. <laughs> they can tell when your relationship with someone is going out of hand. They can tell when there is an ulterior motive. They can tell what you can tell. That's their natural makeup. They see trouble from afar. And they know how to prepare and how to avoid it, how to protect their man from it. But despite that intelligence, God said submit. Meaning that submission is not going to be easy in a sense, right? Talk to me now. Talk to me now. It's not going to be easy. The man, on the other hand, the nature of a man, the real nature of a man, when it comes to marriage, is that marriage is just one of the obligations he has to fulfill. That's the natural nature of a man. And that's why he gets married, the next thing is what's next? Okay, children. Okay, how many? All right, four. All right, let's go on. <laughs> the, the, a man by nature is always looking for the next thing to do. The next thing to do. The next thing to do. And a woman um, by nature wants to enjoy <laughs> the moment. Naturally, a woman has been thinking about marriage for a long time. Right from university days, she already saved different wedding gowns on her phone. You rarely see a man save suits. For what? <laughs> if you check her Instagram, she's following Delphi Metals, Bella Ninja, and all the likes. She's following all those Ninja weddings. Name it. But a guy 
He's following Benihin, following the light. He doesn't have all those signs. Do you get what I'm saying? I mean, it just occurred to me some days ago, I've never ever followed anything wedding on social media. Why? We are married now. I see my wife watching wedding entrance video. <laughs> and the day that I said, we've had enough now. They said, I just, my husband can dance. What do you mean? <laughs> we've done it. Whether I walked in or I crawled in, we walked in. So, for a woman, she looks forward to that time. She has her fantasies. Um, ideal kind of man. <laughs> you know, the way she wants her wedding to look like. And that's why, if you are asking, you see, you will even fall into trouble as a man trying to design them, talk about the way you want the decoration thing to be. She has it in her head. If she's asking, you just want to see your mind. She knows. Listen, most of the questions women are asking, they have answers. If you understand this, you will have peace. Let her ask the question, keep quiet alone for a while. Just a few seconds, you say, you know, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, I'm a professional listener. You know, you listen professionally. And by that, because if you listen Quietly, you are still going to feel, fall into trouble. You have to listen professionally. Having some like, mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. You know, sometimes I can't even remember the things I'm saying wow to. <laughs> but I just have to say the wow. Like, wow. I just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> I was telling you that we needed to get something to say wow. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But still, wow! <laughs> you know. And by the time you let them have those say, they have their solution, they have their answers, they have every, by themselves. <laughs> Learn this and have peace. I'm telling you, man. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is that the way God made them, even them, they don't understand themselves. They've lived with themselves all their lives, but they want you to know them within the space of one year of relationship. Like, you should know me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you should. <laughs> How you will, God knows. I think I, I shared something with you that a woman wants to wants you to get her something, but she doesn't want you to get it because she said you should get it. She wants you to want to get it because she wants to get it. How, how simple is that? That's how simple they are. So I'm 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 driving us somewhere. So the woman is a very capable being, very intelligent, very smart. That's why genetically most times the children take after the intelligence of the mother. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, they are very smart. And There is also a word that was used to qualify them, and that's the word frail, weaker vessel. Somebody say weaker vessel. Say it again. Women are weaker vessel. They may be weaker vessels, but they don't they are not weak in content. Get that right. It's the vessel, the physique, not the brain, not the mind. And that's why anywhere there's poverty. Women have been sidelined. Let me say it again. Anywhere there's poverty, women have been what? Sidelined. An average woman knows what to tell the husband to make him do well. But she also knows when he can't listen. She knows when his esteem can carry. A woman can wait for you to be able to handle what she wants to say. And that's one of the most frustrating things for a woman to want to say something 
and not be able to say it because you can't bear it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. They want to say certain things. They know what to tell you. They know what to do. You know, men sometimes confuse ego for strength. It is not strength to feel you can't be talked to or corrected by your spouse. It is actually low self-esteem. There is no strength. Like, you know, men really don't like confrontation. And that's why the way to disrupt a man's day, one simple way, is we need to talk. <laughs> that guy, that man that doesn't call, he will call. <laughs> he will call in the afternoon. <laughs> Are you fine? I'm fine. Okay. The other time, say, will, will you give me headline? Headline called body name. <laughs> I want to paint some things and I want to show you God's wisdom in the midst of it. Say it again. Women are weaker vessels. They are not weak in content. Say it again. Say it again. Now, on the other side, look at it. The man. By his makeup, you know he was created for defense. Strong, muscular, daring, willful, created for dominion. Created as an extension of God's governing influence. Do you get what I'm saying now? By nature, the man, it doesn't matter how shy or weak he may seem, is a defender by nature. By nature, a man is more military than a woman. He can die defending his territory. I don't want to believe that there are weak men, except mommy's boys. <laughs> Somebody doesn't like that. Why am I saying this? What the devil does is to manipulate those strengths and use them against us. The intelligence of a woman, let her gloat in it in pride. The strength of a man, let him use it to oppress his wife. The ego, the ego is not a bad thing. What did I say? Say it after me. The ego of a man is not a bad thing. He needs that ego to take territories. He needs it. Naturally, if a man is driving and another car overtakes him, something tells him overtake back. That's his ego. Do you get what I'm saying now? If a man sits somewhere and another guy comes back in that same place, come out in probably a white jeans and a blue shirt, step out in the brown palm slippers, and then with a girl beside him and a silver watch there, and the guy sits, everything that happened there has been registered. He will repeat it. That's his nature. That thing they've done, one day will revenge. And the cycle keeps going. But you see, the devil, the devil wants to come in and then use this strength as against the home. Such that the ego that is there for him to keep conquering and then doing the things God wants him to do, God, I'm saying now, the desire to be ahead, the ego is now used against him. And then with that ego, he doesn't want to pay attention to instructions, not to corrections. He can't be talked to. All he believes is that the man is the head of the home and nobody should talk to the man anyhow. You know, the most attacked institution on earth is not the church. It is the home. Don't forget that statement. 
the most attacked institution in church is the home. Why? The church is made up of people who are product of homes. The society at large is made up of people who are product of different homes. If the homes can be destroyed, the society will be down. Please look up everybody. I want to give you this illustration. Look up. Pay attention to what I want to say now. Are you being blessed? Look up. First, let's make this agreement. Say to yourself, I will not miss it in marriage. Say it again. Say it again. My home will be sweet. It will be heaven on earth. In the name of Jesus. My home will be sweet. It will be heaven on earth. I will not repeat mistakes. In the name of Jesus. Now look up everyone. What the devil wants to do. Can I have two people? Please the both of you come. Look at the way the devil operates. Please, I want the man here and the lady there. Now, this is a man. I saw this illustration from Dr. Miles Moro. This is a man. is single. And being single does not mean that you are not in a relationship. Being single means to be complete. Is that okay now? In marriage, it is not two better halves. It is two that becomes one. Please. Is that okay now? Good. So, this is a single guy and this is a single lady they are planning to get married right all the devil needs to destroy that home is not what the devil will now have to start doing when they come together no sir all he will need to destroy that home is what he has been able to do to this one as a person and what he has been able to do to her as a person he will fight them with their individual differences A friend of mine was sharing a story, a very interesting thing that happened to him. I don't know whether he shared it in one of our meetings. I think he did. Yeah, he did. He was planning to get married. And another brother around that is also a friend had a vision. And in the vision, he saw he was taken to what looks like a coven where there are different forms of spirits, different creatures having different looks. And they were discussing about that brother. As he was going to say, we have tried everything possible to stop this marriage, but they have refused to stop. And they were, the, the, the leader of those spirits was asking, what can we do to destroy that home? And different spirits were, so, this was a vision somebody had, were suggesting, let's do this, let's do that. The one particular one lifted up the hand and said, let's fight them with their individual differences. You think it's a normal thing that what your wife is doing, that you could have looked over it, you just want to pick a fight. It is a force. Alright? And when he said that, I mean, my eyes was open to a lot of things. The reason why in, in, in marriage, the differences that should help people synergize and diversity that should make beauty now becomes the tool that separates people. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? So the devil will not necessarily, is not everything he needs to do to destroy a marriage that is going to be. Can I have another guy and another girl? Please come. Yes. Thank you. Stand in front here. This was them. Okay, you come. Let's say, no, this is the future. You have grown taller. This is the past. This was him while he was younger as a single guy. This was her while she was younger as a single lady. This is the both of them as a couple. Are you following what I'm saying here? Listen to me. If you bring two toxic individuals together, you'll have a toxic home. The journey to destroying a marriage does not start in the marriage. It starts from the individual. It takes two um, toxic individuals to give rise to this. Are you following what I'm saying now? If the both of them, God will allow them to learn all the things they should learn, they will definitely have a good marriage. So your marriage is not under attack when you marry. It is under attack now that you are single. Some of you are thinking the devil will later have to come and start fighting that marriage later. No, he has started now. 
And what is he doing? He is putting in you mentalities that by the time you come together, they will be too big to match. Is listen to me, the devil can start fighting it from the first day of your bed. Somehow, for no just cause, parents are not in peace. You grew up seeing them fight. A, 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 a defense. You know, when a child grows grow up seeing the parents fight, there is a defense system that is already wired in that child that sees the opposite sex as a threat. It will not be seen, this child can be in love and say, I love you and all those things. Till this fellow will do something innocently that reminds him or her of the parent. And will say, ah, now I understand the reason why my mother is like this. You can hate what they are doing in their homes and still repeat worse. It is not enough to hate them. In fact, hating them is the entry point for repetition. Are you following what I'm saying here? So, we can talk on and on about this. If the devil does not want this to happen, he will fight it from this stage. If this is the woman that he has discovered that God will end up bringing, one way to fight the man recognizing her is to make sure that he buries this guy in immorality. Buries his eyes in pornography. Bury it to form a desire in his heart for a speck of woman that the devil through, through intelligent guess knows that that is not the woman God is bringing. So this guy will see this girl and say that, She's a good girl, but I'm not attracted to her. Why? Attraction necessarily there is not because the fellow is not the right person. Attraction is because the devil has given you something to like, and this fellow is not. Hmm? All right. If this fellow does not get help, even when God will move and keep bringing different suggestions, he will never recognize this individual. Why? On the account of dwelling on the altar of sin, the devil has given him what to like. So, he goes out randomly and just pick anybody and say, she shall be called woman. Are you following what I'm saying now? This fellow is not wired one bit for help. At least not for the kind of thing he wants to do. Do you get what I'm saying? Let's say for instance, this guy, you are a pastor, you want, you are trusting God for your wife, you love this girl, and the girl told you point blank, I can't marry a pastor. Please, you know? she can't. Don't force it. You will have to stop that ministry for the home to be sweet. And that's why I tell people, if your assignment on earth has to die for the home to work, you are marrying wrong. Either as a man or as a woman, if what God has told you to do will have to die for this home to work, that's a wrong marriage. Do you get what I'm saying now? A good home, a good union will actually enhance your purpose on earth. Yeah, that's what he does. Please come again. So, the devil, let me, let me give you an instance. The devil wants to, he wants to see a kind of home where the man beats the wife. Do you get what I'm saying now? Whatever it is that happens in the home is not learnt in marriage. They brought it there. Marriage is the theater of anything that was there as a single. That's the theater where you see the display. Do you get what I'm saying? If this is the home where the woman will wake up in the morning and say you are a useless man. You are an it. Do you know it takes a lot for a woman or a man to be able to curse at each other? It is not normal. No, it, it is not normal. That somebody will look at the spouse and say you are an idiot. That word. That's a big thing. It's a big deal. It is not normal. But it is normal to those who do it. Why? They've been doing it for long. And if you notice the pattern of the devil, when he starts something, he does not want to stop there. No. Hug him, he wants to hold you better. Shake him, he wants to hug you. So if you can, what the devil does is that as singles, he helps you to break the head. You don't have respect for people, he loves it that way. Everybody corrects it. <laughs> you can't talk to me like that. He loves it that way. <laughs> He's waiting. A day is coming, he knows you'll repeat it. Listen to me. If you fail to change about an habit and say, when I get married, it will change. You have set yourself up. You won't change. No, you won't change. It takes a lot to change. It takes a lot. So, what the devil wants to see here, he packs it here. So, that this woman will become the kind of woman that um, have you seen a company 
this happens apologies for what i'm gonna say now probably for the things i've seen have you if you if you have gone to the hairdressing salon before i don't know if you know the kind of gist that goes on at the hairdressing salon do you have, do you know what i'm talking about that when they are putting their head under that hot thing that hot coven guy guy you will hear i mean i was shocked I've, I've i've stumbled there once or twice in my life and that's the worst place for me to get to right now like no 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 you need to hear women sit down and discuss their sexual relationship with their husbands they are discussing it like direct you need to hear them discuss about the things that are happening in their home that should have been kept in the home you need to see how women expose their husband and their children to attack and all these things when they come together they form a clique they discuss them and um, without any sense of remorse those things will not start when they get married they are things that somebody has developed capacity for as a single whether your home will be sweet or not don't think about the future think about what you are doing now who you are the time is what the world will become So many of you are looking forward to the future that whether the home... No, 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 no. Now is the future. When you get married, you say, I do. Nothing changes about you. The exchange of ring is not an impartation. What did I say? The... Okay. Nothing changes. If you are lying, you keep lying. If you are cheating, you will not stop cheating. That's it. Nothing changes. And that's why I beg people, the weaknesses you can't deal with as a single will amplify as a married individual. And your children will still have to nurse them because that's their heritage. That's their heritage. You give birth to children who doesn't like prayer, you were not praying. Do you get what I'm saying now? So, Somebody saying that, I, I mean, I, I, I've seen videos that people share. And, you know, men, I'm not sure I've seen that video. See, men, husband and wife, no. You see, husband and wife, no. My wife, husband and wife holding each other. I'm, I'm praying. I, I, I'm not sure you saw that video. And it's the dream of every Christian girl. But they just won't date guys like that. It's the dream. Like, we, we, you know, just having friends come together and, you know, just pray and prophesy over each other. But, you know, you will only have a family altar when you have a personal altar. So, what God wants to do is that before you say, I do, let me help you build a home. The home is built before you say, I do. How is the home built? By building the individuals. Do you know that this tendency, that there are some dangerous tendencies in marriage, a man's or a woman's inability to take away their eyes from what is wrong. Do you know what they call nagging? Nagging. That somebody can tell you the same thing till you renounce your salvation. And talk to you. What kind of a man are you? What kind of man? Look at the way he's looking. What's wrong with you? What kind of a man? Is that how your mates are doing? And later you go to church and be preach up and down. Look at him. Look at the way we're tied. I'll be talking. He's laughing. What kind of, who do you think you are? <laughs> you said, go on. I mean, for conversations like this, many men have taken steps that they know they are ready to die for as long as they were respected. As one who can put money on the table. What I want you to note is that all the things that make marriages bad, they are too heavy a capacity for the devil to build in a short while. <laughs> They are too heavy 
a capacity that a man has what it takes to slap. Do you know what that means? That hold on a minute. That you can look at your wife and slap her. You've been doing it for long. With your sisters, with your friends, with neighbors, for long. But you see, those things were just swept under the carpet. You know you can have weaknesses that were swept under the carpet because there is no problem to dig them out. There's no problem to dig them out. And sometimes it's the way many Christians run their relationship. I mean, they are, they are in a relationship, but the relationship is with slow-mo. Nobody is going to tread on each other's toes. Nobody wants to say, no, no, I don't want to say anything to hurt him. Shake that tree first, sister. Let's see what he can do. I'm not saying go and intentionally start looking for talk. I'm saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? But sometimes you need to know what a man, the kind of capacity he has. I mean, two people are in a relationship, they have a small argument, and the guy, do you, let me, let me give you an illustration, hold on. If you are arguing with someone, and the fellow is getting close to you, that's, um, psychologically, he's trying to intimidate you. That's for intimidation. You are, the fellow is talking, lifting the voice, look at me, yeah. And looking at her and say, What are you doing? That's intimidating. He's talking you down. That's a great capacity. So, if God, this is what many people do, they start crying when they're already at this stage. Meanwhile, what God wants to do is to have helped you at this stage. If He can't help you at this stage, there's little or nothing He can do at this stage. Because you've been doing it for long and your ways are fixed. And that's one of the things I hope God will do. That many of us have been exposed to a lot of dangerous things. Dangerous tendencies. You know, it is even dangerous to see where a man is beating the wife. When you see things that are negative, the possibility of it is communicated to you. Don't be interested in stories that are tragic. Don't be interested in stories of homes that are broken. Stop reading all those materials. You should be innocent. You should not be aware that such can happen. There's, there's nothing a man can say under heaven that can justify a man beating his wife. I can't tell you that some women too, if I say that, that's a dangerous statement. You know, I was sharing... Um, a story of something I saw. Um, a, a, it was a crusade, or I don't know how to put it. And um, a woman was being called out. And um, she was, you know, all those meetings where when the woman is called out, she's kneeling down, saying, Prophesy, man of God, and all those things. And the man was talking about the family problem, how that she found out that the husband was cheating, and she asked him questions, and then the man ate her and all those things. And right there and then I was seen in the meeting, they were telling women, don't monitor your husband. Because men by nature are hunters. If you are a man, tell your wife, no, they monitor me. Oh, the man. <laughs> I was afraid. I mean, because the media is giving people another scripture that if you hold the phone of your spouse you are going too far really ha huh. don't take that narrative in fact it is more dangerous for you as a man yeah you see all the all the devil needs adultery is not something that is difficult all this process will bet it in one day. Do you get what I'm saying? It is, no, 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 no. Nobody needs to fall from heaven for adultery to happen. All you have to do is to have secrecy. Have a room your wife can't enter. Have the mentality of some men like they were raised by a ballist. 
have a plate he can't touch. This for daddy. You are in a relationship. She does not know the password of your phone. If she holds the phone, you are sweating. You, you know, and let me say this to you, ladies. One of the things to watch out for in a man is respect. Does he, does he respect you? If he does not respect you as a single, he won't respect you when you are married. You know, it is a, it is a big deal that the next thing he's trying to reach out for when you say you are going to date him the next thing is he wants to start holding you indiscriminately he wants to touch your breast he wants to touch your bum bum man like that's a big capacity a man who cheat with you on god will cheat on you with somebody else let me say it again a man who cheat with you on god will cheat on you with somebody else some ladies are fueling their partners for adultery. If God, God should satisfy a single, it is until marriage that sex will come in. If you become a satisfaction before marriage, after marriage, you will need more than you. It's a bitter truth, but it is the truth. It is the truth. And it matters the narratives you believe. Because what the devil wants to do, everything he's trying to do, is to make sure that the fellow entering into the marriage to produce this is dysfunctional at this stage. Carrying wrong mentalities. Sometimes you need to sit yourself down. You've been asking God for a wife. What, what do you believe? Who do you think a husband is? What's your definition of a wife? Because for some, I mean, there was a time our beloved president, I don't know if I use the word beloved president, I'll be lying. I don't want to lie. Our president, our president said that the wife belongs to the other room. And as much as that statement, whether it was later apologized for, I've never seen that man apologize. <laughs> whether it was later apologized for or not, but that statement shows the intention, shows the mindset. And you look, see, the mistake you make is that you hear such on cable news and you go to meet your fiance and say, can you imagine what the president is saying? Ask him, know what he's thinking too. It might be worse. I made a screenshot on my WhatsApp yesterday of a presidential aspirant that says that cow is of more economic value than crude oil. They say that the young, the future of Nigeria belongs to the youth, not you, you too. There are some dangerous youth that are worse than Babangida. They are young, but they are much terrible. If they should come into power, what Buhari is doing now is more. They are worse than him. Are you following what I'm saying? And you can hear such So there are some guys that the things you see on social media, they are in church, but they carry worse tendencies. Ask questions. There are things that there are things you can't find in answers. You will find them in reactions. Do you get what I'm saying now? First definition of terms: Who is a husband? A man should ask himself that question. I'm planning to get married. What does it mean to be married? Because you know what I noticed when I got married. Nobody feels married after marriage. I just kept asking my wife, are you, you know, we kept asking each other, are you like we're married? <laughs> they say, yeah. I said, really? Yeah. Like, we are really, really, really married. Yeah. For a very long time, I want to change. I step out of the room. Like, a girl is here, you know. <laughs> And my wife is like, what? We are married for God's sake. I don't know. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel married. And guess what? It doesn't make people stop liking you. Some people, when they see wedding, they die when they like you the more. Deal with it now. <laughs> Don't feel married when you're married. <laughs> okay. You're married now? Wow. Really? Just like that? 
Are you saying this one like me too? I'm married now forever? Know <laughs> it now. When you are married, you are married for. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you don't feel like it, but you are. Do you feel like you have your head? But you have it. Are you carrying the weight of your head? Talk to me now. How heavy is it? When it becomes heavy, you're in trouble. True or not true? So when it says the yoke is light, that's the meaning. It is to become a part of you. <laughs> you know, I remember, you know, when you are married, you have what is called culture shock. <laughs> the fellow is coming from another different orientation you are coming from. The first culture shock I have, you guys should sit down for a minute. You are two, you can jot. Where my wife cooked, it was Yama head. I had the one that is in my destiny to eat. <laughs> and according to my own definition of food, if I can't finish it, it was never in God's plan for me to finish it. <laughs> what do we do with it? I don't know. Trash it. That's my own definition. You want warm food, although I don't know how to do it. So, <laughs> we just don't. Following so day, we're having a great time watching Netflix, eating rice and stew. I was enjoying the rice and the stew. And I just put my spoon and just carry something. <laughs> And I was like, babe, please tell me this is not true. I was like, what do you mean? Uh, please, just, just, just. Uh, you know, this is how I was doing. I was moving around, like, hey, tell me this is not true. I said, what? I said, what? No, I don't believe in egg stew, egg anything. If it is stew, it is stew, it is egg, it is egg. Go, go, go. I said, tell me that this is not true. I said, what do you mean? I said, you know, that is this egg. What did we do with it? I said, I kept it in the freezer, like, you don't waste it was plenty. Like, I said, okay. <laughs> He said, like, we are eating rice, so, like, it's protein. Ah! <laughs> you know, before I got married, at some point in the house, we were like 18 guys. Like, if the food doesn't finish, it will finish. <laughs> <laughs> it will finish. So, there's somebody waiting somewhere that Papa is not going to finish, and then. And the prayer always gets answered. But in marriage, like really, <laughs> nobody's waiting for you, not you are waiting for you. <laughs> Look, there was a time I went to the kitchen and my wife was cooking and I just saw her like this. I said, what happened? He said, very good man. <laughs> but the only frustration I have in this house is that I want to experiment different food for my husband. Oh, you are just not the man. I said, yes. Sir. <laughs> experiment food for me. I'm not adventurous with food. <laughs> if it is rice and peas, it is rice and peas. I don't want to say this is calamari. Calamari! <laughs> So, but a woman is coming to the home with, man, I'm going to buy this and buy that. But here is the man, rice, plain rice. Put the meat, don't. <laughs> I'm just being really practical with you. You may not hear people say this. Like, like me, you mean? And let me tell you the reason why I reacted that way. Like, like this food. So let me tell you the reason why I don't eat. So you can see that it's time. It's time from where what I was talking about. The reason why I don't eat the previous days. Food. When I was growing up, I went through a lot of hardship. Um, having to live with someone that is not my mom, having to suffer a lot of things, having to eat the food others don't eat for days. I was bitter in fridge. I swore as a child. 
Nobody will try this with me. Mm-hmm. So when I saw that food that day, I was not seeing the food, I was seeing the memory of the sufferings. So sometimes if a man is not healed, the reaction is not on the woman, but the reaction is on the past. So it's called, um, I don't want to use that name. That's why you sometimes you feel the response is more than the event. Yes, because the event is not a problem. There's another event you have either not been told. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, of course, for us, that went simply. But well, of course, I was like, I'm serious, of course. That's what I do with like. You know, so um, check what the devil is doing with you now. He doesn't end now. A flat is part of a computer. Check what it's trying to do to your heart. And that's why I try as much as possible to beg people. While you are still single, forgive your parents, forgive everyone that needs to be forgiven. If not, one day you will see your spouse in the light of them. It's just a matter of time. Are you following what I'm saying? So sometimes our focus is on the home and on the home and on the home, but the devil's focus is on the individual. Let me give you another instance. Giving up too soon. It takes a lot for you to look at your wife or look at your husband and say, you know what? This can't work. Can we go separate ways? It takes a lot. There must have been a culture of quitting on people. For a long time. For a long time. Your wife has done something, say it immediately. In a simple way, separate the issue from the person. Don't hurt her while you're trying to deal with the issue. You bottle it, you bottle it, the day is coming. You explode. And it's just going to be one small thing, and everyone at home will be wondering what really happened. I mean, what? Hmm. Say it again. I will enjoy my home. Say it loud and clear. One more time. I want us to look at something. Um, Ephesians chapter number five. So while we are opening that scripture, um, look at everybody. The devil doesn't like abuse. Doesn't like. It. While you are both dating, you notice that every attempt to pray together is always um, scattered. That's the destiny of that woman that attack. Because really, looking at the confrontations that comes to different families, it takes a couple that pray together to stay together. Now, so here the boy shared the story with us that Joe. About a time, I think they traveled to Indonesia and they were going to Lagos, and there was a misunderstanding between him and mommy. And the old women just kept talking and talking, and, and they were so angry. And he parked the car around the hill and was just <laughs> What have I said just now? <laughs> Conversation from Malaysia to you. <laughs> you know the distance. And he just he said he just threatened and threatened he exhausted. And then he was coming back. And when he was returning, he bought some oranges. He was drinking those oranges. And by the time he he got to the car, she was already tired and frustrated, wondering where he had gone as he trek to the girls and, <laughs> and you know finally she was able to see but women were like this. <laughs> and he kept drinking his oranges 
I was like, so you won't give your nah, I mean, so you because because I'm like, you won't give your eggs. They call it. <laughs> and that was the end of the woman. Can small pigs pacify you? It starts from now. Or it's when they are begging you, that's when the ancestors will be speaking. Fight! <laughs> tell him! Tell him now! Let him know what you are. Your voice was not loud till he said, I'm sorry. That's the money. All of these things, they play a very big role in making the home sweet. What does it look like hanging around you? Are we bored? No. Your home will be sweet. Amen. Say that amen loud and clear. Say that amen again. Amen. Huh? Like you will be with your spouse in the house and you will think you are 20 because there's no dull moment. There's no dull moment. Majority of the celebrities trying to tell you what to do about my they don't have one. It is in this country you see somebody who had three months of marriage. Counsel the one that had 50 years of marriage. I think there was a time that a woman got a PhD and then she was um to convocation day, she knelt down to thank her husband and then bam, she was back on social media. You need to see when men are not allowing their wife get the masters. And many of you are too deep in Nollywood that you are deep in Christ. They are your scripture, it's just a matter of time. You manifest them. I don't want to mention their names. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following me? Yes, sir. Sometimes people say that my home will be sweet and they think it is automatic. Do you know where when you get married, you will have to compromise a lot of things? You will have to forgive in advance. You will have to ignore many things. Because there are days you look at your spouse and they are just there. And you still have to be loving and sweet on the same. You will not always feel that changing. You are feeling beyond that feeling, define it all. Define it. You see that sister with her makeup all the days of your life. You say, hey, is it not, Are you not my husband? If I'm trying to be packaging for you again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let God speak to you. <laughs> I don't want to say something. Here you go. Media. Remove this part. <laughs> Say, I like girls that have pictures. Uh, that's the reason why you want to marry. Oh, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> 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 I just have to tell you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> From China, they will send those special dishes. This buke buke inside. Like, when you are not selling ice cream, is that what you want to do for the rest of your life? That's ice cream. You know, I don't know why people are laughing like this, but I'm very serious in my mind. You know, if people are laughing because you don't believe what I'm saying, that this can be a reason why a guy will say I can't take it again. Like she's a good girl, but ah, ah. don't mind them. Oh. What is the problem? Ah, ah. They can't see it. <laughs> oh, the thing is that you see, when you are married, it grows. It's <laughs> biological. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know this God? Yeah, when my body will change, almost if you think he's not there, you will not. Ah. In Kano, there's one way they do this, the way they do They will make it dry and now blend it. They call it caricature or something. You know it? Yeah. If you put it inside water, it will swell. It has that potential. 
Don't limit God to what you are seeing now. It makes things beautiful in their time. So when next that sister is passing and your size now, I say, this girl is a good girl, but for this oh no. And I've told you at the end of the day, huh? If you like, select by front view or whichever view. Let that be the yardstick. You will still see something better. It will take contentment for you to have great game. Contentment. And the contentment does not start when you say I do. It start from the day you say I'm marrying you. Shut your antenna. No other girls will be fine in your eyes. No other guy. You can see, I just like guys that have beards. You go and buy petrol. <laughs> Come on. How will you say no to a guy simply because he doesn't have beard? It's like, I just wish he has beard. Uh. I don't know why you laugh, but people don't believe what I'm saying. Like, these things are a possibility. You don't think so? Talk to me. You don't think so? And nobody's talking. <laughs> Sometimes say that girl, you know, is a good girl, but I just wish she's fashionable. Fashion can be learned. Fashion can be old. Before I go married, I, I can go to the market and buy 10 white shirts. Because I don't like the headache of thinking what colors go work on. White, black, or blue, you put any time. It goes. No headache. So, even when I'm, I go somewhere to minister and I want to wear a shirt, I will put the video call, WhatsApp video call. And I'll say, uh, she will even select, okay, this shirt, yeah, with this color, yeah, it will go well. And, you know, you won't take my whole pictures. I don't, I don't say she goes project of <laughs> I don't use to. I just try, you know. It can be learned. It can go on YouTube. What color should we put on what color? What I'm saying is that many people have lost virtuous individuals for mundane reasons. For mundane reasons. I want to say something. Well, you know, in church, we used to demo a lot. <laughs> we just make it look like <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father, forgive them. <laughs> Anything they show you is the facts. Hey, turn your Bibles now. Give us scriptures. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Let's deal with scriptures. You know, that. Um, Media people. <laughs> I don't have plenty of friends there. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw an article recently um, on social media. And I saw a message about it again. One of my brothers wrote that article. He said, 
You don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight with words. Sometimes you look at um, the subject of marriage and you're just scared. Confess it. I'm not afraid. I will enjoy my home. You know, growing up as a teenager, I have my two worst fears in life was driving a car. Like immediately, I was just, I mean, I never learned to drive a car till I got one. And marrying. People getting married, I'm like, okay. So I concluded then that it takes unintelligent people to get married early. Because I was a, that's why the people can have conclusions out of their fears. But don't allow those fears to settle. Listen to me. What you know now, if your parents knew it when they were younger, their home would have been sweeter. It is too late for your home to be spoiled. Do you know what I'm saying? You will be happy. Amen. You will have children that fear is not. Do you know what I'm saying now? You will never be broke. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying? You will never be broke. I'm not saying there might be no moment where things are a bit looking funny, but you will always have. Amen. Those fears don't exist. Eliminate them now. Do you know what I'm saying? Very important. So sometimes that fear comes to your heart, and many Christians have they, they, they've thrown good people away because they were just afraid. That fellow reminds you of someone, reminds you know, and then say, you know what, this can't work. And the fellow goes on to marry somebody else, and they're on the street. Ephesians 5, as we begin to draw this to uh, and draw the curtain on this. Um, so let's start reading from verse 18. So we will be able to go forward from there. Ephesians 5, verse 18. But they say, Amen. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God our Father, unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves unto another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband and as, as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. The man, the husband, is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head of as Christ is the head of uh, let me ask you a question. Um when you just got born again, were you this good? Talk to me. Were you this good? Were you this patient? Were you this loving? Were you this kind? This powerful? No, it's not. Alright, but the headship of Christ is demonstrated in his patience to watch you grow. Make your mistakes, but learn and keep growing. He's not a tyrant, he's a perfect head. Now, when people are looking for a perfect spouse, uh, there are no perfect spouses on that. When he, um, when he was remarrying his wife again after the divorce, it was a late we had donkey that conducted the wedding in the year 2013. And the donkey said a statement. He said, Marriage is the union of two imperfect people with a perfect savior. The union of two imperfect people with a perfect sin. Powerful statement. Powerful. The most powerful definition I've found. Two imperfect individuals. That is, the, even the will of God in itself has to be developed. 
the will of God has to still learn something. And I said to you the last time I was teaching about, about this February, that we are product of nature and nurture, right? Um, that even when you get the will of God right in marriage, it is just 30%. The remaining 70 is nurture. So there are those who miss the will of God, but they are always still suited than those who get the will of God. Because they invest more. I'm telling you. Your wife or your husband is whatever you decide to make out of them. You can make, see, if a man is promiscuous, he will make any woman miserable. You want to see a good, beautiful girl look miserable? Let's add date a guy that is choosing among many girls. She'll be frustrated, disturbed. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Nobody will have to suffer because they married you. Amen. Say that amen again loud and clear. And that's why I need to tell you this: you must deal with the things you have heard. When they tell you that you are you are an angry person, refuse that statement. Deal with that weakness, but refuse it. Because if you believe it, that anger will bring your home down one day. Many people have given up because of the names they call them. They tell you, you are an angry person, you are a lazy person, you are a cruel individual, you are unforgiving. Don't let anyone tell you who you are not. Don't accept their definition. All those things are primarily going to attack your heart. Sometimes it is even worse when it is your mom or your dad telling you those things. You know, sometimes parents don't know the effect of words. They don't know the effect of words. They look at you. And um, I think most times, but the girl child and the mother, or the boy child and the father, and call you all sort of names. You have known the way you are doing. You cannot have a good home there like this. Uh, and they say those things out of emotions and move on, but somebody's not going to recover unless God intervenes. And that's why you must allow the Holy Spirit to wash out all those things. Sometimes you need to wake up in the middle of the night and say again, I'm a sweet woman. I am loving, I am caring, I am not a wicked woman, I am not a Jezebel. Sometimes what they have called you a Jezebel. Particularly if you are in the religious assembly and at some point you are close to a leader and they drag you and say, that woman is a Jezebel, they want that man to come. And that makes things. Don't let it stay on you. Are you following me? Sometimes you need to take time out to detoxify. Just go about and confess it. That's why I advise people when you are praying, it's okay to pray under your breath when you want to, but I advise to also speak out. Say it so your ears can hear. The root of thought is words. And that's why when Adam and Eve meet themselves, God asked them, Who told you that you are naked? Who told you that you are wicked? Who told you that you are lazy? Who told you you can't take care of a woman? Sometimes we're dating somebody before, and the fellow out of offense when the whole thing is not working, they just leave, they reduce you to nothing, but they left, left you with words that will keep cutting into sizes, tell you no man will ever be happy under you, no man will ever be happy with you, the way you are, you can't be a good mother. And long after the fellow is gone, those words are still still. Refuse them. Don't let anybody up to twice. They've offended you, forgive them. If not, they'll keep remaining in your life, in an apartment they are not paying for. Are you following me now? Say it loud and clear. My home will be heaven on earth. Hallelujah. Thank you. So we need to get up tonight and just tell God I heal. I heal from the effect of what men has done to my heart. From the molestations as a child, from the rape attempts or the ones that succeeded, from the relationships that were toxic, from the mistakes I have made, I heal. You know, nobody broke from this guy. So there are tendencies that you made some mistakes. You got to see. There are tendencies that you, that you made some mistakes before you uh, came to Christ or before you became serious with Christ or you. All right, it is not against any man to fall to lie down there is the shame. 
Don't lie down there. Do you know what I'm saying now? Don't let your past hold you down. I was listening to, let me share this with you, maybe um, this will help someone in our random. A father in the body of Christ, I don't want to mention them for the sake of the sensitivity of this event. I mean, this is a man I respect so much. And he said something, he said when he and his wife were dating, at some point, they noticed that the devil wanted them to have sex. So, if a man should say that, you know that, okay, some things had happened, but you ended up not having it. And he said they had to have each other. He said you have to tell God the day I ever do this, smite me on the cross. Come on, this is that serious. Is that serious? God will take you serious to the degree that you take yourself serious. He smite me on the cross. But I look at their lives today. Their life is not a reflection of whatever mistake it was they made. So, when you make a mistake, if you move on from it, if not, you wallow in regret, you make it again. In fact, you use that mistake to pacify yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? The kind of children that will be born in the body of Christ in the last days are prophetic children, and only prophetic parents can bet prophetic children. And only prophetic individuals can make prophetic parents. Are you following me now? So from now on, allow the Holy Ghost cultivate a garden in your heart. Get away with God. Be engaged with Christ. Is that okay now? Know things ahead. The same way you are knowing your husband ahead, know your children ahead. When you come together, let, can you imagine you and someone agreeing to be in a relationship and then you are talking about the covenant you have with God and you are breaking out your notes to talk about how that God has shown you that the first child you will have probably is a boy or a girl and the child will be this and the fellow said, did God tell you that? Wait, 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 wait. And the fellow goes to bring his journal and see five years ago I saw this. You are saying the same thing, fellow will be a child, will be a girl, will be this. Prophetic synergy. How sweet is that? These are things that happen so you are not touching and talking about talking. Synergy. You see people carry the same prof. You are carrying the seed of prophecies for your children. And you come and they are better on the thing. The children will come to the house and stumble into heritage. Inheritance of prayer. Nobody can give them anything in school to eat and they become witches. For what? Are you telling me I will send my child to school someone to give my child to teach you? First, that my child will now collect the teaching as if I didn't give birth to that child. And then the child will now come to my house and at night, the <laughs> Are You will have the kind of children that stand into their class and the power of God is just so around them. The teachers can't tell the reason why they are different. Inheritance. They are, not, they are not just for spiritual sons, they are for biological children also. Yes, are you following me now? Plant seeds that our children will be glad you planted. Sow those seeds. Study now. Build that altar now. By the time you get married, it becomes easy for you to join your hands together and roll in tongues. It becomes easy for you both to do prayer work. Start it now. Whatever it is you give yourself to now, marriage will be a continuation. If it is prayerlessness, you continue that way. Are you following me? As someone be blessed. Put your hands and give God praise. Come on. Rejoice, rejoice. Is that you rejoice? Thank you, Lord. Let's rise to our feet. It's been a very great time in God's presence. What an amazing time we've had today. Hallelujah. I just wanted to take scriptures that the Lord is giving in your heart right now and confess about your home. Take scriptures in your heart. Confess about your home. Decree what you receive. Decree what God is giving you. Decree. Confess. 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 Make those confessions in the name of Jesus. Make those confessions. Confess that my home is heaven on earth in the name of Jesus. Oh, we are blessed. We are blessed. We will not be running up and down in the name of Jesus. Decree. 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 
Sit now, sit now, sit, sit. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me give you one statement. Before you marry anybody, hear God. Hear God. Let me share a story with you. There used to be a very, very devoted sister around us. Come to go into the world. Devoted. A prayer machine. The time came, there was this brother that traveled down from one country, I don't imagine the country, and uh, said he wants to marry her. Like before he goes back, whenever you see such taste, please check. What are they trying to pack it for? Wants it to happen now before he travel. wants it to happen now, and all those things. And somehow, within two months, they fixed the whole thing. They got married, and um, um, I don't know, the year now it's been well over seven years. Um, after the marriage and the wedding ceremony, he got pregnant and he traveled back to the country. He said he was based. Till date, he has never come back. They are still married. They talk via WhatsApp video. The wife is not going there to meet him. He's not going to walk out of marriage. He's like, hey, God, sir. Hey, God. Yeah, God. If you enter such a song with a devil, do I meet? Okay? Yeah, God. Pray. When I pray over you, you will not make wrong choices. Yeah. Choices are helped. Yeah. They are influenced by the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. You will not repeat the mistakes of your parents. Yeah. It is done. Jesus mighty name. Now rejoice and give God. You know there are two things that scriptures highlighted that you need power. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> Look up people of God. Look up.